hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is tamua adibanjo and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you the faith lessons that i have learned you know since the last time i made a faith video which is here so if you missed that you might want to check it out if you're new here hi my name is tamua adibanjo and on my channel i talk about natural hair lifestyle faith I also do a little bit of books so if any of these topics interest you then you might want to subscribe to my channel since the last time I made a faith-based video I've actually learned a whole lot I did try to film this video last week I filmed it to be very honest but when it was time to edit and I exported the video out of my camera there was no sound in my video there was no audio <laughs> So I wish I could say that I did not cry, but I did. I wailed like a baby, but yeah, we're back again to try this one more time. All right, so let's go. The first thing I'm going to talk about came from my pastor, Pastor Poju. In case you're wondering, I attend the Covenant Nation, right? So Pastor Poju clarified the fact that, you know, your position in Christ and your condition are two very different things. So your position is pretty much who you are in Christ, who every believer becomes once once they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Okay, so once I have the gift of salvation, once I accept salvation and the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, right, I move into a position wherein I've been united with Christ and I'm a joint heir and, you know, I have access to every good thing in God's kingdom. However, my condition might be different from that. So my position is who God says I am based on the fact that I have accepted Jesus Christ and his finished work. And my condition is who men see and who men say I am. So the fact that I have moved in a spirituality to a place with God does not necessarily mean that my condition is going to immediately change. So let's say I used to um, deal with really bad temper. I had a really bad temper and all of that. The fact that I have accepted Jesus Christ doesn't mean that all of that is going to suddenly go away, which is why sometimes we see Christians who are struggling with sin, you know, who have drinking habits, who haven't broken out of their drinking habits, who can't control their temper. It's because their condition is different. And to move from your condition to the position that we have in Christ, that is where the grace of God comes into play. Okay, so the grace of God begins to work in us, work on us on the inside and you know transform our minds and that begins to reflect in our condition so we begin to put into practice the things of the, the word of god the things that we know we should do we begin to actively practice them which is when you see the person with the anger management issues you know beginning to work on their temper and move from you know a place of wild temper to a more controlled and a temper that is more in line with the word of god so basically your position is already set it, right your position is there it's you know yours and your condition grace of god works within us and together with the grace of god together with god begins to change our condition which is who we are you know on earth who what what we exhibit the behaviors that we show to the world at every point we need the grace of god to help us grow mature in our spirituality in our work with god let me read from ephesians 2 verse 6 it says for he raised us from the dead along with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with christ jesus which is pretty much our position in christ we join heirs with christ you know nothing can steal our heritage away from us and pastor Paul actually gave this really good example he said okay picture a man maybe a 65 year old man who has lived most of his life in penury who after his father died you know he's been poor no money no job no nothing and then um, maybe one day he wakes up and he discovers that his father actually left a will and in that will you know the father left him estates and maybe 100 million naira in the bank and all of that but you know because he didn't know about it he was the son of the man he was his father's son but he didn't he had no idea you know just who his father was he had no idea all the things he had access to god thank you he had no idea all the things he had access to okay so he was living his life you know ignorant of who his father was what his father was capable of capable of capable of capable of you know and then he suddenly discovers that Oh my god i could be living so much better than i currently am okay so that's pretty much it we are god's children the moment we accept jesus christ we're god's children and we have a wealth a wealth of everything we could possibly need in god 
but we need to actively come into that understanding of what god has made available for us and allow the grace of god to work within us to bring that heaven position manifest in our physical lives another thing i learned is it is okay to be mad it's okay to be upset it's okay to be angry okay right um so many a time i'd get upset and you know that would just change my mood and because i'm a very emotional person it would just ruin my entire day and then i would now get upset that i was upset you know because i feel like ah why can't i control my temper why can't i control my emotions ah, i'm so annoyed Tell me why are you mad and then i'm getting mad at myself for being mad but it's actually okay to be mad you know it's okay to get angry when someone does something that you don't like what the bible says is do not let the sun go down on your anger so don't let that anger brood and dwell in you and stew over and stew over and stew over until it causes you to react in that anger okay it's okay to be angry it's okay to be annoyed that's a natural emotion but do not let that anger cause you to act in a way that you normally wouldn't okay so anger is actually anger is a very very strong emotion i feel like it is probably the strongest emotion i feel like because you know when people act in anger it often lands them in trouble which is why maybe somebody provokes you and then you get angry and then you smash the head against the wall or something you know you acted in your anger and that has put you in trouble so everything that the bible actually says is for our own good do not let the sun go down on your anger because if you continue to stew over it it's just going to cause you to boil over and before you know it you're reacting and doing something that could be illegal or could land you in trouble in jail or something so yeah it's okay to be mad but do not let that anger control you control your actions do not let the sun go down on your anger if you find yourself upset just um surrender it to god i know it sounds hard it sounds really really hard but yeah just surrender it to god let him take control and free the situation another thing i've learned is to get excited by god okay a lot of the times we christians we start to see god as abstract as you know just he's not here we know he exists we know of him but we're not walking in awareness that god is with us so i learned to get excited by the promises of god by the word of god you know when you read the bible sometimes you're just like another novel or something but no get excited by the promises of god god is madly 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 in love i don't know if i should say madly <laughs> but he loves you so 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 much get excited by him understand just what god is capable of he's the same god who parted the red sea he's the same god who fed the israelites with manna when they were hungry he's the same god who caused water to spring forth out of a rock he's the same god who has healed the sea killed the lame you know made the blind to see lame to walk resurrected the dead he's the same god so get excited get excited get in line with the word of god allow it to excite you and to bring forth joy within you because honestly this world will frustrate you you'll be sad you'll be mad you'll be upset by the things that go on in the world but you know just stay in god allow him to excite you allow his promises to seem real allow his promises the life in his promises to get into you honestly because god is not abstract he's our daddy this one came from joyce Meyer is to celebrate yourself not in a prideful way but you know just encourage yourself because i find that particularly for me i remember mistakes that i made years years ago i remember times that i've been embarrassed i remember things i've done that didn't make so much sense <laughs> in as much as those periods exist there are also periods when you know you did something that you should be really proud of but you don't give yourself as much credit as you deserve so celebrate yourself not in a prideful way but just to encourage yourself to let yourself know that you're doing very very well not that you go about and start boasting about your achievements or stuff but just you know celebrate yourself you know maybe buy a gift for yourself when you're when you do something right another thing i'm going to talk about is gratitude now this came from joyce Meyer, and my pastor also spoke about it today in church today is the 5th of december so it's a sunday and yeah joyce Meyer said being thankful is one of the ways to stay strong spiritually and my pastor today drew out the story of the 10 lepers who jesus christ healed and the one that came back to give thanks okay so always 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 remember to stay thankful my pastor said that um when people get into situations you know mishaps things happen to you 
one of the ways um, through which the enemy gets to you is to cause you to wallow in self-pity and sadness over what you've lost. But he says, pick up the fragments and thank God for those fragments. He also drew out the pictures of the picture of um, the um, Jesus feeding the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and feeding the 7,000, was it 7,000 or 4,000, I can't remember, but feeding thousands also with seven loaves of bread. And then one time the disciples went on a boat, but they only took one loaf of bread and they were worrying and fretting about what they were going to eat, how they were going to survive. And just is like, come. I'm not the one that used five loaves to feed 5,000 in your presence. Am I not the same person that has used seven loaves to feel, feed thousands in your presence so why do you forget that i do these things why do you forget that i'm capable of doing these things why do you forget that i'm able to turn situations around okay so that's god that's jesus christ he's able to turn every situation around for our own good he loves us he wants the best for us so stay thankful don't wallow in self-pity over what you've lost don't wallow in self-pity over your current circumstances if you have a job you're not happy about don't feel sad all the time you know just do your best be thankful that you have a job because a lot of people don't have jobs you have a house be thankful be thankful for the little things that you have now because god will multiply them in time okay so stay thankful give god gratitude in the event of any mishap happening you know just give god thanks here's the story of the disciples um it's in mark chapter 8 and verse 14 to 21 i think it says but the disciples had forgotten to bring any food they had only one loaf of bread with them in the boat as they were crossing the lake jesus warned them watch out beware of the yeast of the pharisees and of herod at this they began to argue with each other because they hadn't brought any bread jesus knew what they were saying so he said why are you arguing about having no bread don't you know or understand even yet are your hearts too hard to take it in you have eyes can't you see you have ears can't you hear don't you remember anything at all when i fed the five thousand with five loaves of bread how many baskets of leftovers did you pick up afterward 12 they said and when i fed the four thousand with seven loaves how many large baskets of leftovers did you pick up seven they said don't you understand yet he asked them so forget not the goodness of god forget not the faithfulness of god do not forget what he's capable of at this point you can already tell that he's almost exasperated with them like bro it's me i'm the one <laughs> okay so don't forget the goodness of god okay my pastor said that you would think that these disciples at this point you know if with five thousand bread if with five loaves of bread god fed fed five thousand and they still picked up 12 baskets of leftovers like just imagine what one loaf would give what one loaf would bring out and they're just what 12 or 13 so let your hearts not forget the goodness of god god is always 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 good he's always looking out for you so do not forget the goodness of god stay thankful and this is a lesson to myself as well <laughs> another thing i picked up i want to read this one out because i i actually wrote it as i was listening to the message i think this came from maybe gregory dickel um i wrote lighting up god is still working with within you you are making progress he that started the good work in you will finish it stop trying to not sin instead control your mind control what you feed your mind your thoughts will shape your decisions um so i wrote down philippians 1 verse 6 and psalm 23 verse 7 so let's go to philippians 1 verse 6 okay that says and i am certain that god who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when jesus christ returns okay so this is for those times when you're exasperated you're tired of yourself you're tired of always falling into sin you're tired of going back to old habits stop trying to not sin okay the key is to you know stay in the word of god and let his grace work within you okay don't try don't actively try to oh i'm not going to do this when you rely on your own strength it leads to failure it leads to sadness it leads to you know you being dis in despair okay so yeah and also god sees you beyond your mistakes so you might not be where you want to be you might not have stopped your old habits you may not have stopped your bad habits this is what i said about your position and your condition so you might still be in a certain physical condition where you're trying to get to your spiritual position with christ but do not feel sad or anything god 
who started good work within you is going to see it through so his grace which is what helps us to move into our position or bring our position to manifest in our lives his grace is sufficient for you it's available for you so do not despair if you make a mistake get up pick yourself back up and get on track get on track okay god sees you beyond your mistakes he loves you he wants you to do better he knows you want to do better he wants you to do better but lighten up don't be sad or don't let your sin draw you away from god when you fall into sin or when you fall into old habits that is when you need to hold on to god the most so don't say oh i'm too dirty or don't let the guilt keep you from talking to your father because he loves you he loves you so so very much he feels your pain as though it were his he wants you to do better okay so do not run do not hide from god do not hide your nakedness from god like adam and eve did okay stay fixated in god to buttress this point i have jeremiah 18 verse 4 and it says this is a story about the potter it says but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over and it says then the lord this is verse 5 then the lord gave me this message oh israel can i not do to you as this potter has done to this clay as the clay is in the potter's hand so are you in my hand so god god is going to mold you he's ready to mold you you know if you break he will mold you back up if there's a crack he will mold you back up so god is ready to work with you to becoming who you want to be or who you're supposed to be in christ so lighten up you're not doing life alone god is with you he's on the journey with you and he's not going to leave you stranded another thing i picked up is reject shame okay no matter what you've done no matter what you've done god has wiped the slate clean you're a new creature before him he has forgiven all your sins he has forgotten them so stop reminding yourself of past wrongdoings now this is very hard it's very very hard but stop reminding yourself of times when you fell short of his glory because honestly there's nothing we can do that can um justify us before god it's the grace of god you have to keep holding on to it so reject shame reject anything that tells you you're not good enough reject anything that tells you you will never amount to anything good okay reject all of it it says um i wrote down first john 3 verse 20 and it says even if we feel guilty god is greater than our feelings and he knows everything dear friends if we don't feel guilty we can come to god with bold confidence so guilt only hinders you from going to god boldly prevents you from fellowship with the father so throw away all guilt throw away all shame jesus has borne all of that on the cross and it doesn't exist for you anymore you're a new creature be before jesus christ you're a new creature before god so forget all your past misdeeds and focus on staying on the path to jesus christ you're a new creature before god and he's forgotten all his sins there's no need to refresh your memory with them this final one i learned from a man named levi losco and i wrote it down as well the first thing god did after creating man was rest okay so man said imagine man saying but i've not done anything why are we resting it says yes because god has done everything all you need to do is rest in it that's it God created man and literally said, okay, now just rest in my finished works. I've done everything for you. I've provided everything you need to prosper, to flourish, to be good, to do everything, to flourish on this earth. Okay, I've provided every single thing. All you need to do is rest in my goodness. Don't try to do anything by your power. Okay, we rely on God. God is our ultimate source. God is our help. God is our helper. God is our comforter. He's everything. Okay, so doing life alone is like setting yourself up for failure. This life is incredible <laughs> it's really incredible but imagine life without god it wouldn't make sense at all so rest in the goodness that is god do not try to do anything by your own power because it's exhausting imagine having to think about everything by yourself imagine not having the grace of god imagine not having you know these little incidents coincidences that god has put in place for us man life would be hard so just um rest in the goodness that is god and i pray today that your hearts find rest your bodies find rest and you you know you don't struggle through life so i'd like to end this with a prayer all right so close your eyes close close your eyes come on all right abba we thank you for this word that you have brought 
not just my way but to everybody who's watching this video's way so i thank you for every minister who has been a part of this lessons of the lessons that i've brought out in this video i thank you for your ministers who are doing your work i thank you for everybody who is listening and i pray that you feel everybody with your peace which passes all understanding in the mighty name of jesus i pray that you give us all we need to not only be hearers of your word but also do us your grace transforms our mind and renews our mind and we learn we learn and understand that we are not meant to do life alone we learn to depend on you and only on you in the mighty name of jesus we come to understand that you are an ever-present help always ready to help us always ready to bless us always ready to give us what we ask for for if if earthly fathers would not give their children a stone when they ask for bread how much more are you lord so we thank you for being so good we thank you for your love your constant love we thank you for your grace your faithfulness we pray that you help us to stay reminded of who you are and what you're capable of in jesus mighty name amen if you've watched this video to the end thank you so 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 much i really hope that this video has blessed you and yeah please subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already give this video a thumbs up share it with anybody who you think might need it and i will see you in my next video